ones we have down on the floor here and on the stage. Um, these are the typical flutes that you see in school bands and even in professional orchestras. This is our primary instrument. Um, but from there we have several higher instruments you'll see today. We do have some piccolos on our stage. So the very, very highest sounds you heard in Bach were our piccolos. So when you get piccolos held up, you see they're much, much smaller and quite high. You won't miss them. We also have a couple of flutes we'll be using um, later in the program on the piece called Mock Morris that are called soprano flutes. Um, and these, you can hold up a soprano flute and somebody holds up a concert flute with next to it. And so you can see it's quite a bit smaller than a concert flute, but certainly not as small as a piccolo. And this is such a great voice. Piccolos are high and a very powerful voice. The E flat flutes that you'll hear today are high voice. That's very blunt. So it's a really unique contrast to have a high and light voice in the flute family. Um, but from there, we take our instruments down lower to give us the entire range of a concert band or orchestra. So on this side, we have what we're playing alto flutes. And these start getting bigger. They're longer than a concert flute. And also, the diameter of the tube gets larger. So these play about half an octave down. They end up playing things that would be French horn or tenor sax type range. Uh, the Emma's in the back hold in a contra alto flute that plays an octave below these, a um, very rare instrument that we're happy to have in our ensemble. On this side, you have bass flutes, and you can see the basses start having curves in them. If they were completely straight, we don't have the arm span to reach those, so we start putting curves in the instruments so they're comfortable to hold. A bass flute plays a full octave below a concert flute. So if we play a B flat here and you play this B flat on bass flute, it just sounds the next one down. <coughs> and then we also have two contrabass flutes. You can see Al's holding the silver one in the front and Cassidy's got one in the middle of the row there. Um, <coughs> made out of different materials, but the contrabass drops two octaves. We're now in the range of trombones and cello. And then Mary is holding what we affectionately call our tuned foghorn. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sub bass flute um, that is exceedingly rare. There's less than 100 in the world. Um, so very, very happy to have this in our group. That plays three octaves below a concert flute. Um, it is in the range of a tuba or a double bass. Um, so this gives us the range of an entire concert band or orchestra, and that means that there is absolutely no music that is off limits to us. We can play transcriptions or pieces that were written specifically for a flute choir of anything. We can, we can do it all, and we're, we're kind of trying to do that today. Um, so the next piece, the Mozart, is, what is one of the symphonies. In fact, it was the last symphony he wrote in his lifetime. It's nicknamed the Jupiter Symphony, not for the planet, but for the god of thunder. And so getting into our Greek and Roman gods, um, because it has quite a bombastic first theme to it. Um, and this would have been written for full orchestra, and we've taken all of those, those lower parts and transcribed them for flutes. So please enjoy the book.
Thank you.